everybody and welcome to this evening's executive meeting on Tuesday. Here we are for the 1st of September 2020. Uh, I'd like to first open the meeting by welcoming everybody and those people watching us on YouTube or Facebook. First of all, I'd like to say, have we got any apologies for the meeting? Oh, if I could, Chair, could I just do a roll call of attendance? Just to yes, carry on. Who is here? Okay, could, could uh, councillors please stay um, if you're present when I call your name, please? So, uh, uh, Councillor Bialek? Present. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sutton? Present. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Fole? He doesn't look like he's here. He might be running late. Uh, Councillor Gassain? Present. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Harvey? Present. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Morse? Present. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Pearson? Present. Thank you. Councillor Williams? Present. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Wright? Present. Thank you. Oh, I think Councillor Foles is coming in now. Oh, thank you. And Councillor Wood? Present. And uh, Councillor Foles is just coming in, Chair, so I'll mark him as a, a, in attendance. Uh, we also have Councillor Ledbetter in, in, in attendance as well. And if I may just do a roll call for officers in attendance. Uh, so Ch Chief Executive and Growth Director, Kareem Hassan. Present. Thank you. Uh, Director, Joe Yelland. Present. Thank you. Uh, Corporate Manager of Democratic and Civic Support, John Street. Present. Thank you. Uh, Service Lead, Environmental Health and Community Sa Safety, Simon Lane. Present. Thank you. And we have Democratic Service Officers, myself, Howard Bassett and Sharon Sissons in attendance, Chair, and we are quorum to proceed. Thank you, Mark. And uh, now we're all in. I'll just confirm. Uh, for those of you wishing to speak, raise the blue hand, which can be found in the participant section on the bottom left hand side. In your case, uh, Councillor Ledbetter, you are entitled to speak on the items. However, you must indicate by raising the blue hand that you wish to speak and I will take your contribution first. Once I've started the discussion amongst the portfolio holders, I will not be able to bring you in after that time. So just indicate, Andrew, um, by raising the blue hand uh, if you wanted to speak on any of the subjects when the presentations are being made. Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah. Right. That's okay. Uh, okay, so we come to the minutes of the 7th of July 2020, uh, pages 5 to 18. And I would uh, ask, are you in agreement that I'll sign those as a true record? Yep, agree. Okay, in the absence okay. of anything else, I will accept that those have been moved, seconded and accepted by you all. Item three is declarations of interest. If you can disclose, if you have any pecuniary interests in any of the matters that are on the agenda, please advise us. On item four, the local government uh, exclusion of the press and public, we do have one part two item, which is item 10, which is the Exolicity Recommendations on Governance, pages 133 to 138 of the Members Pack. And at that time, uh, before we discuss this, I will be asking any members of the public, uh, we will shut down to that and people to, to leave. So moving on from that, we've got item five, which is a question from a member of the public, uh, Mr. Peter Cleesby. Uh, Peter, you're with us. Would you like to put your question, please? You there, Mr. Cleesby? Hello, can you hear me now? Oh, yes, we have you. Thank you. OK, thanks, Mark. Good evening. Um, my question is this. In relation to paragraph 10.1 of the report at item 8, will the council please explain exactly what is envisaged that the senior leader members of the Liverpool Exeter Place Board will get out of the meetings so that they find it worthwhile to continue attending? Thank you for your question, Peter. 
The Liverpool Exeter Place board members have previously have previously endorsed the Exeter 2040 vision and are generously con contributing their time to support the realization of our vision. The Place Board provides a forum in which to discuss challenges in the realization of the vision and what the Place Board members can do individually and collectively to overcome these challenges to realize the 2040 vision. The Place Board also gives the leaders the opportunity to raise other issues which they believe require the support of others to overcome uh, to the benefit of the city. Any matters by the board, raised by the board, which require any council decisions will always be brought through the council's existing decision making and governance processes in order to ensure transparency. Thank you. Thank you very much for that answer, Leader. Do you um, have a supplementary have a with regard to my answer, With uh, Peter, indeed, regard a... to your answer. Please. Um, certainly. Do you agree that the participants may well seek to get out of the meetings inside information or competitive advantage on emerging, de on emerging development plans and that place board decisions and conclusions will have to be accepted by Exeter City Council or they'll see no point in continuing? End. Thank you, Peter. It is a supplementary question, and I know you want me to say something which will be, uh, but what I can say is I think you are chasing shadows on this particular issue, and you are really worrying far too much about it. Uh, we will not be talking about competitors or enabling anybody to seek an advantage. And if this is how you view it, or this is what you believe, I'm on, it's unfortunate that I do not believe you fully appreciate of, or have studied the documents on what the board is there to, designed to do. So um, I hope that answers your supplementary. And um, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't agree with what you're saying. Thank you. So we now move on to item number six in our pack. Uh, everyone. And here it is, the Food Law, Health and Safety Enforcement Service Plan for 2021. Um, can I ask uh, Director <coughs> Joel Yellen, we've got two recommendations here, which you can see that we support the, uh, the service plan and we approve the plan and uh, the to meet operational needs. Uh, Director Joel Yellen, please. Thank you, Chair. The report is a statutory requirement, so the council is required to publish um, this enforcement plan um, um, based on two strands of legislation, um, as the report explains. One is in relation to our, our statutory requirements under the Food Law and Health and Safety um, service plan. So this sets out the intentions of the service of the council and how we're going to um, deliver our requirements under um, legislation for food safety. And the second part of the um, statute requirement is that under health and safety legislation, we are required to set out how we're going to undertake the um, external functions that we're required to undertake to ensure that uh, the health and safety of um, workers in key businesses across the city. Uh, so I, I hope that members will find the um, summary of the plan in the report helpful in setting out the focus, uh, the achievements in the past year and the intentions to continue the good work going forward into the next year. And um, I'd commend uh, the recommendations uh, to the executive. Thank you. Thank you, Jo. Um... As we, uh, for those of us who've been kicking around a while on the executive, this is something that comes up every year. Uh, I'm going to ask if there is anybody who wishes to uh, make a contribution or does anybody want to add anything on this? I don't see anybody come forward in our chat at the moment. 
Uh, no hands have been raised, Chair. Okay, thank you, Mark. So I will, I will, um, I will assume that uh, we are all in favour and no dissenting voices. Can I assume that? Looks yeah. like I can. With a nod of the head, I feel sure a nod of the head. Um, John Street is quite constitutional. Uh, thank you. So that is approved then. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll just formally move and second it. So I'll formally move it. Can I have a formal seconder, please? Seconded, Chair. Thank you, Rachel. And if we're all in agreement, that is agreed. OK, thank you. Move on now to item seven, uh, which is the uh, report also from Joe. Uh, Yelland on the financial assistance policy for the Better Care Fund. And there are two brief recommendations here, everyone, that we support the adoption of the revised financial assistance policy for the Better Care Fund and that we adopt the revised financial assistance. Yes, and that we do adopt it. So I feel sure Joe Yellen now will explain to us what that revised financial assistance policy is all about. Joe Yellen. Thank you, Chair. As the uh, report says, again, this is another technical paper. It's a requirement of a council to publish its policy on financial assistance in relation to the disabled facilities grants. The disabled facilities grants are passported through to the district council um, from the uh, higher tier authority who have responsibility for um, social care. And the council is then required to produce a policy that sets out how the council in particular will enable the wider health and social care system to meet the key objectives of the Better Care Fund, which are essentially around keeping vulnerable people independent and living safe and well at home for as long as possible. And the policy also covers um, major adaptations for uh, children and families living uh, with uh, disabilities. There, over recent years, there's been a range of flexibilities made available to um, district councils um, to expand um, the range of support that is offered um, through the Better Care Fund. And this revised policy um, takes full advantage of both the mandatory and the discretionary elements of the fund um, and has been put together in partnership with other district councils and with the NHS and um, Devon County Council. And hopefully this is set out really clearly both in the policy and in the report. I just want to draw your attention to a key area that's a, a change um, in the policy for uh, the year going forward, which is following a pilot, which was to introduce a stair lift grant that is not means tested. And you'll see from the data provided that this has made a significant difference with um, a large numbers of people being able to access um, stair lifts um, and have them <coughs> installed at critical times in their lives, for example, on discharge from hospital or to prevent an unplanned hospital admission. Um, so the rest of the policy is hopefully self-explanatory um, and sets out the wide range of grants that are available, both in terms of home adaptations and also the extension of the grant into a range of um, warm home initiatives that, as you can see from the detail of the report, um, are really focusing in on renewable energy sources to ensure that people are kept warm and safe at home, but also that's done in an affordable and an ecological way. So um, again, I'd like to commend the uh, report to the executive um, and uh, we're here to answer any questions if there are any from members. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Is there any contributions? Anybody wants to make a contribution on this? I have a can Councillor Sutton Chair, then Councillor Gassane, then Councillor Morse. Okay, uh, Councillor Sutton, please. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I, I welcome this report and I will be supporting it, but I particularly wanted to comment on section 12.1 and 12.2, um, which actually talks about the, um, the changes that have been made and the changes in policy, which now means that the, the grants um, and the loans can actually be used uh, for renewable energy and energy efficient works. And it particularly draws attention um, to those uh, citizens and, and you'll be aware uh, Councillor Biala, Councillor Councillor Pearson, there are many in our own ward um, where their houses are um, do not have mains gas. They are electricity only. Um, and I know that, um, that those Exwick residents and indeed other people across the city um, will welcome the fact that um, we can actually help address fuel poverty um, by enabling them um, where appropriate um, to have support to install um, solar panels or other 
um, technology, which actually um, will help them with their bills, but also will help the city uh, to achieve its um, net, uh, net zero carbon um, objectives, uh, which is so important to all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sutton. Councillor Gusain. Um, again, I uh, welcome this uh, report. Uh, uh, again, as Councillor Sutton said, uh, the uh, focus uh, on uh, funding renewables is uh, very, very welcomed. Uh, the other one, the other point I want to say, which I'm, I'm very pleased to see, is the extending, the widening of the um, range of properties uh, that uh, can uh, apply privately. Landlords can ap apply for grants if uh, it's deemed that um, the property needs updating because of uh, infestation and neglect. So this has been extended to private landlords as well, and that is where Welcome, because sometimes uh, that helps as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Morse. Thank you. Uh, just to reiterate what's already been said, I, I think it's a great report. Um, the the uh, Joe Yellen uh, uh, really touched upon the bit that I wanted to mention, which was the uh, opening up of stair lifts for homes, which has made a massive difference to people so that we we have people remaining in their homes there's not a need to move but also being released from hospital earlier because there is appropriate accommodation for them to return to and uh, just to give some credit to the officers who thought it was much better for us to be spending the money rather than having it in account and jumping through hoops to ensure that people could get it and I think uh, we should be very grateful that they've seen this and that we've been able to help people and that without a doubt there are people living in their homes now that wouldn't have been without without this decision so completely support the report. Thank you, Councillor. So, in the absence of anybody else, Mark, coming forward? Uh, no other hands raised, Chair. Okay, so we've got the two recommendations there. I'm going to formally move those two recommendations from the Chair. Can I have a seconder, please? Seconded, Chair. Okay, uh, any dissenting voices? No, good. Thank you. So, That's unanimous, Chair. Unanimous, we'll have that as approved. Thank you so much. Um, so, uh, number eight now, I now move on to item eight, which is the Liverpool Extra Place Board. And here we have two recommendations that the executive notes the terms of reference in the membership of the Liverpool Extra Place Board, and that the leader of the City Council regularly report back to the City Council in whatever is the most appropriate form, matters arising from Liverpool Exeter Place Board and issues for consideration at the Liverpool Exeter Place Board. Uh, Kareem Hassan. Uh, Chair, the Liverpool Exeter Transformational Housing Programme is a programme to deliver 12,000 homes within the city. And when council adopted the approach, Council also agreed to put in place a governance structure to help the city deliver the 12,000 homes in a manner which was to achieve the vision that we had set for the city for Exeter 2040. And our vision for the city looks at the way in which we build an inclusive, sustainable, healthy city and the ambition that we've set for the city includes lots of issues that are beyond the city council, requires the partners within the city to work together to deliver some of the things I'd just like to draw attention to. So we've talked about Exeter being a healthy and happy city in 2040, that we provide a high quality and accessible built environment with green spaces, with great art and cultural facilities, which encourage healthy and active lifestyles. That we have access to world-class education and training and a meaningful high quality employment with fair wages. And that Exeter becomes a global leader in addressing social, economic and environmental challenges of climate change and urbanization. The outcomes that we've identified that are, for us, the indication of success, because success won't be building 12,000 homes. Success will be building 12,000 homes at the same time as delivering great community infrastructure and building great neighborhoods where people can get to, get to work, 
get to their homes by walking or by cycling, that we're able to address the congestion that we see in the city and delivered in such a way that we deliver the net zero carbon agenda. We can't achieve that on our own. We have to achieve it with our partners. And sometimes I need to just make it really simple for people to understand. If you're building housing, but the energy providers don't get their act together to deliver the energy that the homes need, we don't build the houses. And if we don't have a conversation with the utilities and the infrastructure providers to understand that when we say we're going to be building 5,000 houses in Marsh Barton, that they need to know that we're real and it's credible and that they need to get to act together to sort out the electricity infrastructure there. If we don't do those basic things right and get that understood, we won't be delivering the homes and we won't be delivering the homes in such a manner that reflects our Exeter 2040 ambition. And the reality is the planning system doesn't do this. The planning system fails continually across the country to deliver infrastructure with community facilities in a high quality environment. The focus tends to be on building houses. And the reality is our residents expect better. They expect us to deliver homes, but in a manner which delivers the schools when they want them, when the health facilities are delivered, and they want to do it in such a way that delivers a a, a beautiful built environment. And unless we get all the actors in the city working together in a coordinated fashion, then the likelihood is we won't deliver that ambitious vision that we have for the city. So right at the beginning of this, we set out four members, draft terms of reference, which put at the heart those aspirations. And we listed a number of key stakeholders that we wanted to invite to that board to play their part in helping shape that transformational housing program. Since then, we spent 12 months building the uh, membership of that board to include as many of the key organizations in the city as possible and to get buy-in at the most highest level of those organizations. And on the uh, executive board papers, you will see the people now that have committed themselves to that board. There have been some changes to the terms of reference because of the UNESCO designation as a city of literature, which is an outstanding achievement for the city. To get that recognition, that is now something that we think need to be put at center stage. In fact, UNESCO expect that. UNESCO expect us to put culture at the heart of everything we do as a consequence of that designation. And so we've asked the place board to do exactly that, to create a cultural compact across the city with, with, um, with the Arts Council England, such that everybody has confidence that culture will be part and parcel of the way we deliver housing within the city. And the second change has been with the development of sporting and uh, local delivery pilot that the board is a, uh, I would suggest to you a, an ideal uh, forum to get the strategic leaders to buy into that agenda to make Exeter a healthy city by making sure that everyone plays their part to make an active lifestyle the way in which the city is just, it, it's just accepted. That's the way we do things in the city, that all organizations play their part to have active travel and to support active lifestyles. And so, um, the terms of reference has been uh, amended to include those elements as being part of the work that they do. And then the last element of that has been when we uh, tabled the draft Exeter Vision document to the place board at its first meeting, the place board members asked to make an explicit recognition that the carbon agenda should be reflected in terms of Exeter zero carbon, sorry, the zero net zero carbon agenda should be uh, mentioned explicitly as 2030. And that matches the city council's resolution as well to, to deliver net zero 2030. And so we've put into the vision uh, that explicit commitment to make um, Exeter a net zero city by 2030. So there, there have been some of the tweaks we've made to the original terms of reference. You now have got a list of the members. I think there's one more uh, 
place that we've identified for the new vice chancellor of the university, should she be willing to take up a position on the board. And I think you've got effectively now the final terms of reference and, and membership. And that's all I think I need to say. Uh, thank you, Kareem. Um, Mark, um, I'll open this up now for any discussion. Uh, Mark, have we got anybody who's indicated that they wish to speak? Uh, there's no, uh, no, no hands are showing, Chair. OK, well, OK, if there's no further uh, comments from any of the members, what I would add is that I did um, produce a far detailed, better and detailed, well, not better, but a, a detailed, more... Uh, report to the last scrutiny committee and the reference says about that I will report back on these matters and I will make regular reports uh, not just to scrutiny but also the executive as it is an important body and perhaps uh, the more that people start seeing the work of um, the uh, uh, the place board and perhaps what we can do and how we can engage our partners with all these things perhaps the um, less suspicion will be thrown upon it, which I think would be a good thing. But I do understand in the absence of any, uh, of any sort of firm sort of information, then obviously it allows people to fill that space with all sorts of things. So I hope this now helps everybody. So oh, we've got- Excuse me, Chair. Um, some yeah. hands have just gone up. Well, I was- Right, who, who we got? Oh, we have Councillor Wright, uh, Councillor Sutton and Councillor Williams. All right, okay, Councillor Wright. Please. Thank you, Chair. Um, apologies, by the time I'd managed to get my mouth uh, to, the, okay. to the blue hand, it was a little bit late, I'll, I'll be uh, better prepared next time. Um, <laughs> yes, thank you for this uh, report and explanation uh, as to what the board is and what the board is doing and why the board is, is here. Um, I just have a... Just a, a, a question uh, which I have raised before, but would it be something that in the future perhaps a representative for all of the local businesses collectively could have a place on this board? I, I can see that you have a local business owner, but um, I can't see there's anybody sort of representing the local businesses collectively, perhaps. Um, but please put me right on that if I'm wrong. Okay, well, what we will do, uh, Council, we are constantly reviewing the membership of the board and the membership has to be appropriate, appropriate to what we are trying to achieve. So there has to be a purpose on why we would uh, invite a group in particular, because we've invited groups. Um, we can't always manage who they send along. But, but if, we, uh, if we do invite a group, it's obviously got to have a purpose to it and an outcome to it, as opposed to just saying that we're ticking a number of boxes. But the group is totally under repair, uh, repair is um, always under review. And you will see that since the last time that this has had um, uh, discussed amongst councillors, we have added a number of people and we will continue to do so. OK, and um, so. Uh, Councillor Sutton. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, I was going to um, echo the point that you made about um, as people see uh, the place board um, kind of moving forward and, and working uh, with us um, to actually achieve all of our goals, delivering housing and addressing the, the carbon agenda as well. Um, I think people um, will become um, more engaged with it. Um, but I also think it's um, it's another example of Exeter um, being at the forefront, and I suspect some of the um, suspicion and, and lack of understanding around it is because we can't point to um, models of other cities doing mm -hmm. this. It, it's another example that um, Exeter's in the vanguard, and, and we are showing the way of partnership working and setting up effective uh, partnerships to achieve uh, what we want to achieve, and it's the classic... Uh, the whole is greater than the, the sum of the parts. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Williams. Uh, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to draw um, attention to um, 8.1, where um, it's also mentioned that the 
um, uh, the setting up of the seven uh, work streams to work on uh, Exeter recovery plan. And I think this is an example of what a group like this can do. They can um, initiate and um, get things moving. So for example, I'm involved in working on one of the groups, which is the ed education um, uh, recovery plan. And we wouldn't have been able to do this if we hadn't got this uh, strategic board in place. So I think congratulations are, um, are appropriate here for putting together such a, um, um, a, um, a, a very prestigious um, group of people that can actually get things moving for Exeter, for the good of the city and the good of the people. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Williams. And I've often said, if we never had uh, this collection of people together at this time during COVID, I feel sure there would have been shouts amongst many people out there to say that we should be getting all these people around the table to discuss on how we can all work together to deliver our ambitions uh, for Exeter. Thank you. So if there's no further um, contributions, because I moved a bit quick, I have to say last time, if there's no further contributions, Mark, uh, Councillor Morse, did you uh, wish right, to speak? Okay, sorry, sorry. I, I, did, Emma. I, I sort of came in at the same time you started talking, Phil, and you said a lot of really great stuff that I was going to mention. I, I, I just wanted to welcome the report, really, and the additions to the group as well, the diversity that's been opened up there is really important. And, you know, I don't think we've, we've reached full representation. I'm sure we'll do that as time goes along. But I'm really pleased to see the changes that have been made to better reflect Exeter as a place. So... I just wanted to say that really and that I I don't know, like everyone else has said, what we would do as a local authority or Exeter would do if we didn't work with other stakeholders and other interested parties to achieve things because we're a small local authority with very little money in the bank, as we all know. And we've got really big dreams and we're achieving them. So I it worries me when people want to, you know, come back and I can understand the worries a little bit, but it worries me that people are so close minded that we could let a city die because we don't want to have these relationships because we're scared of them. So I'm really proud that we're not and that we're trying to do this. Thank you, Councillor Morse. Um, so if we have got no further contributions, um, Kareem, was there anything you wanted to come back on? I, it was just, Chair, if I can, the, the Chamber of Commerce uh, have a, the, sorry, the Chair of the Chamber of Commerce is present on the board and that was intended to pick up the business voice as a representative of the business community. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, the two recommendations there are two, one and two, two. Uh, so I'll formally move them from the chair. Can I have a seconder, please? Seconded, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Sutton. Uh, do I take it that there's no dissent? And on that basis, I'll, I'll move that the, um, uh, the, the two recommendations are therefore approved. Thank you. Okay. That's unanimous, Chair. Thank you. <clears throat> so we now move on to item nine, which is um, from the Corporate Manager of Democratic and Civic Support, the freedom of the city. And there is a um, recommendation here uh, that we get, consider granting the freedom of the city to Richard Jacobs. Uh, so... Um, John Street, would you like to um, talk us through this, please? Thank you, Chair. Yes, a very brief uh, update on the report in that it's very detailed as a nomination has been received for Richard Jacobs, who is a local businessman and entrepreneur who has supported the city in many different ways over a number of years and is felt to recognise and, in fact, meet many, some, if not all, of the criteria set for freedom of the city. If I may just update one element, small element of the report itself in that in section four of paragraph 3.4 of the nominate, 3.5 of the nomination, it actually says in there that the um, regional schools commissioner has asked the Ted Bragg Trust to look after school, two schools in, in Exeter. It is in fact two schools in Plymouth rather than Exeter. So the Ted Bragg Trust is stretching its wings further across the, the county of Devon than just in Exeter itself. Um, with with that uh, slight um, update to the report, Chair, I'm happy to answer any questions there may well be on the recommendations, which is to a full meeting of Council, an extraordinary meeting in October, if if approved. Thank you, Chair. OK, do we have anybody, Mark, who wants to speak on this matter? 
There's no hand showing at the no. moment. Uh, just give it a moment. Just... Councillor Ledbetter, because, uh, you know, as a leader of one of the parties, you are in, involved in the nomination process. I don't I, know if I've, you want to... Yeah, I would say I've, I've supported this. I, I was asked my opinion. I'm, I'm in support of this. Um, I think Mr Jacobs has, has done an awful lot for the city over many, many years, so I would support this, going to full council. OK, thank you, Andrew. Thank you very much. Do we have any other members who wishes to contribute? Mark? There's no hand showing, Chair. No? OK. And I feel sure all the normal um, celebration of when we make somebody give, oh, sorry, offer up somebody the freedom uh, of the city. Uh, I feel sure, John, you'll be doing it. Not that there was a lot of room in the city centre today to get your sheep through, John, I have to say. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I just um, thought I'd uh, mention that. So we have the recommendation there that we would um, uh, have uh, uh, Richard Jacobs, the Freedom of the City. Uh, can I have a seconder for that proposal, please? Seconded. Thank you, Councillor Sutton. Uh, I assume there's no dissent. I will say that that recommendation is passed unanimously, Mark. Yeah, that's confirmed, Chair. That's passed unanimously and it has been carried. Thank you. So we now move on to um, uh, item 10, which is a pipe part two item. So we will say goodbye to all our viewers and um, hope to see you all, particularly in the city centre soon. Chair, could I just ask you to move press and public from the meeting okay um if i can uh, have a seconder for a formal exclusion of the press and public please seconded leader thank you councillor sutton um no dissent thank you uh, so i i take that that that's been proved are we okay on that john that's fine thank you leader yeah thank you so we now move in